Scorpio, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for October 2018, where Scorpio, it is your month. So first of all, happy, happy, happy birthday. If you are one of the earlier Scorpios this month, happy birthday to you. You are starting your annual cycle over again, and we have got what I consider a pretty intense reset happening for you because we've got Venus going retrograde in your sign, not to mention we've got Mercury and the sun moving into your sign. So it's a very Scorpio month where literally it's all about you. But because it's all about you, Scorpio, I just got to give it to you raw naked. I do think that this is a little bit of a heavier month for you, but just because it's a heavier month doesn't mean it's not a changing month. It is a changing month. There's just some work to do, okay? So before we jump in, the 2018 holiday gift is up now so that I'm able to see you during the holiday time. So feel free to book those appointments. I think there are only spots available now in December and January at the holiday gift rate. So make sure you book and take advantage. Click in the description box down below or come visit me at stormygrace.com, whichever suits your flavor, okay? All right, so let's talk about this month. First of all, if you haven't watched my Venus retrograde video, please make sure you check it out. It is in the October playlist right at the beginning because it's the ish that needs to be addressed. But when we're looking at retrograde energy, retrograde is taking us back. We're re-looking, rethinking, reconsidering, re-evaluating, reconnecting, re-harmonizing, right? Re-beautifying. That's the energy of Venus. She's about beauty, sensuality, romance, finance, all of these things, right? But when Venus is in Scorpio in the first place, it gets pretty intense. It gets deep. There's a depth here. There's an intimate depth that comes with Venus being here. And now that she's turned around, we're going to go a little bit deeper with you. We're going to hell and back this month to figure out what's down there and kind of clean out the closets <laughs> per se, okay? So let's talk about that. So right here on the fifth of the month, we've got Venus taking that retrograde in your sign. Now this could be a time where even though it's in your sign, you may also feel like you need a little bit more privacy because you're reconsidering who you are, how you're valuing yourself. And I'm telling you, because it's in your sign, you are also considering you in regards to relationships. You are, you've also got Uranus just over there across the street at that seventh house energy. So you're considering how you've been showing up in relationships, the value of relationships in your life, but from the perspective, Scorpio, of how you are bringing these things to the table. How are you being seen in this relationship? Do you have friends, but you haven't really been showing up to them? You know, could there be things coming up from the past? Venus brings things back from the past. Were you less than who you wanted to be in a particular relationship or some relationships, right? Um, Venus is phenomenal for bringing back old romantic relationships, old lovers from the past, maybe a memory or the actual old lover themselves pops back up on your radar and you're reconsidering what's going on, who you were there, and you're having to relook at that. Now, on a completely other side of this, this could be a time for you, Scorpios, depending on what you have going on in your life. You're re-looking at how you're going to rebrand or re-put out a product, right? Do you need to re-look at the, um, the colors that you're using, things like that? This can be a very productive energy. But whatever it is that you're going to be re-looking over, and of course, it could be re-looking over your finances, of course, but whatever you're re-looking over at this time, it's pulling up something pretty intensely from the past and it's asking you to address your part in it, how you showed up in it, how you'd like to show up in it going forward to make these adjustments. What's the value? What's the value of how you've shown up in these things in your life or how you currently are, right? Or the value of how you're allowing people to see you or meet you or know you. I'm going to tell you what too, Scorpio. Because it's Venus retrograde, something that I think is really important is that if you have weird relationships with your exes or you're holding a grudge at that business, Scorpio, if you've got any grudge energy that's sitting down there, don't be surprised if it rises to the surface. And this is an okay time for you to start making some peace and reharmonizing um, so that you can have freedom as well, right? You want an identity that is not just... Um, 
going around getting relief every month. You want freedom. Allow yourself freedom, a very intimate version of it, okay? And don't be surprised as well if you're needing to take more quiet time this month to kind of figure out who you are. Or if at birthday time this year you're not feeling like, boom, I'm Scorpio. You're trying to just enter the room like that. If it's a little bit more of a quiet time, if it's more of a humble time for you, totally okay, all right? All right, when we get to the eighth of the month, we've got this new moon happening in Libra. Now again, we're pulling up 12th house space, so things from the past. This new moon, a new moon, first of all, is when we plant these seeds of intention, right? Anything can begin here because the sun and the moon are locked together. And when they are together in this kind of conjunction, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So what do you want? What can you see here? We're going to plant seeds of intention for something new. But a new moon in the 12th house is a very sensitive energy because we're completing. We're transitioning, right? This is a space of ending, of closure, of things from the past, of things that are hidden, right? Now, because this is in Libra energy, one of the first things I think of in your 12th house is you're looking for where your equilibrium is off. Where is that space between your present and your past where you are? You don't feel equal. You don't feel like there's harmony here. You don't feel like there's peace here. You're trying to make some peace here. And the first piece you're trying to make is inner peace, right? You need to be right with you, your creator, whatever that looks like for you. So this is a great energy to look at where do you need to clean out this closet so that you can have peace? Where do you need to clean out so that you can have harmony? I will tell you too, a new moon in the 12th house I think is an absolutely phenomenal place. If you're a researcher, if you're a detective, you're looking into a cold case, you're trying to solve a kidnapping or a crime, um, you're trying to find out information in a case. This is a wonderful new moon for you because it will help to, over the next few weeks, bring some things to light. But Scorpio, your identity and who you are and who you're gonna be being moving forward or how you'd like to show up is really under some investigation. You're reevaluating this month, okay? Now on the 10th, we've got Mercury entering into Scorpio. So again, this actually gives you a lot of conversation. You've got great communication skills, but what I really think of Mercury being here, especially because Venus is also here, Jupiter is also here. See, here's, let me break this down for just a minute. Jupiter is our biggest benefic planet. So wherever he goes, he's bringing benefit, he's bringing wisdom, he's bringing opportunity. Now, where Venus is concerned, she's our smaller benefic planet. And even though she's retrograde, she's still a benefic planet. So so she's still going to try and bring benefit. She's just showing you something from the past. Now, Mercury is in direct mode. He's here. He's savvy. He's paying attention to these details. He's helping you communicate, make decisions, and he's going to help you observe you. He's going to help you observe you. You know what? I can't make changes or adjustments to things that I don't see are out of balance, right? But Scorpio, everything about this month for me screams to you healing and release, healing and release because you're looking for freedom. There's this like low level anxiety that keeps coming up for me around your reading. It's just very quiet. You know, you get up in the morning, you think you're just a little bit worried about something and that is not just low level anxiety. It's fear. So what is it time to let go of so that you're not afraid of it anymore? Even if it's the most delicious thing ever, sometimes our blessings are way heavier than our traumas, right? It's like, oh my God, I can actually go out in the world and be and do this thing and launch myself out there and I don't have to be afraid because I have value, right? That could be a gorgeous thing you're going through this month, but Mercury will help you observe you. He will also help you to put yourself out there in some way if you need to communicate or something like that. But making decisions about where you belong or the patterns you've been showing up in that need to be adjusted, wonderful energy for that. Now on the 11th, Venus is actually going to be in a square to Mars. Now when the lovers fight, it's not great, it's not bad, but it's always just very intense, right? So for me with you, what I'm thinking is that something from the past is coming back, maybe something in your home life from the past, something involving a woman or a family member or something from childhood. Something from the past could be coming up and it is in conflict. And what happens when we have a square, and I think it's important to know this so that you can prepare. When we have a square, it's pushing you in a box, it's putting you under so much pressure, you have to make a new decision to burst out. Whatever that is, this could also be, I just think of um, 
your identity with children, you know, uh, or with your family? Did you did you break apart from your family or your children in some way, or, or a relationship that was important with a woman, and now it's coming back and you're you're getting to relook at that? But know that that energy might be very intense because that square puts you under so much tension and pressure, so that you will take an action to get out of it. Okay. On the 23rd, we've got the sun entering into Scorpio. So boom, boom, birthday, 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 birthday. But the sun is up in your sign along with the rest of these planets that are up there. So it's just energy. It's bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. And you want to be seen here. You want to be known here. You want this area of your life to be vital. That's how I know that this retrograde can actually be very, very sexy for you, right? Whatever's coming up, you're going to deal with it. You're not running from it. You're getting into it. You're not avoiding the truth. And the sun is going to help you with this transformation here. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is your annual new beginning. So happy birthday, really, truly. Now on the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus. So across the street there in your opposite sign. So in the seventh house, we've got a full moon happening over there. Uranus is over there. Now that full moon says that something needs to be ended acknowledged or adjusted. And I just told you, you're going to spend a lot of this month looking at who you are, who you're showing up as, how you're putting yourself out there. And it's going to be now time to really focus in on those relationships. What relationship in your life doesn't fit anymore? Is it the relationship of you with the old you? Because the old you can't take you forward anymore, right? The old you, you need to say thank you and let go and get ready to use the new you right? This new version of yourself. Do you have a relationship in your life that just needs to be adjusted? We're in a Venus retrograde. That can be tough on relationships. If you guys are having to have conversations and it could even be in relationships that your partner is the one struggling and you're having to be there, but whatever cracks are happening in relationships for you, they're going to definitely be rising here to the surface. And what I would tell you, Scorpio, to think about is sometimes it's nice to just act like your opposite or think like your opposite. Where in your life do you need to be grounded? This full moon is in Taurus. Where do you need grounding in your relationship, something solid and sturdy to stand on, right? That may help you see the value of the relationships that you're keeping in your life since Venus is retrograde and helping you over here, okay? On the 26th, the sun is going to actually be in conjunction with Venus. Now, they're both in Scorpio, but at this time, they're going to be conjunct each other. This is great because it does tell me that your social life is going to take a change of some variety. So look for new people coming into your life. Look for maybe you're getting some cues on these relationships. Look for you have clarity over how you've shown up in the past and how you're ready to show up in the, in the future. It's very good. I'm telling you, if you're a student or you're working on a project or something behind the scenes, I do think, too, for some people, this could roll an affair into your life. It absolutely could. Absolutely. So pay attention to that. That may actually happen a little bit more towards November, but this could be rolling something your way. So that's not where you want to go. Just be paying attention, okay? On the 31st, we've got a couple cool movements we need to talk about. So first of all, Mercury's going to leave Scorpio and move into the sign of Sagittarius, so into your second house. First first blush here, it's very good for um, money conversations, looking over the budget, um, making a purchase. If you, I wouldn't suggest making a really big purchase because Venus is retrograde and she's over money. You don't really want to throw anything out while she's retrograde because then you go back later and you're like, why did I buy that? That was not the best deal ever. But what it could also bring is that you're making savvy business decisions. You're making savvy financial decisions. Maybe somebody is selling something you've been needing to buy for a very long time and they've discounted it so much that now it's the right time. Um, it also makes you very, very open-minded. Mercury and Sag is very open-minded. So you've been taking in all of this information all month and now you've got to see it in a different light because that's the thing. The most amazing thing for any human being to do is to get a new perspective. And if you can get a new perspective on things in your life, you're going to come to a much more open-minded space and have different solutions as to what to do. This could also be a time where you're launching a talent out or something that you have that you hadn't really been using so much, but it becomes valuable you becomes usable at this time. And I don't know you make any big moves until we get really until November, but you become aware of them here. Also on the 31st, Venus is going to take her retrograde show on the road, move out of Scorpio and move back up into Libra. So again, this is going to light up the 12th house space here. Um, and I actually think this may bring a negotiation of, of some variety to the table for you as well. Maybe something from the past is coming back and you're having to re-talk about it, renegotiate it, rethink about it. Maybe you're redoing a financial contract or something like that. But whatever it is, Venus and Libra is actually going to make you very diplomatic in relationships where maybe you couldn't be 
before because you can only see it one way. This also is that 12th house energy. I'm telling you, you could bring somebody from the past back into your life. And um, I'll be interested to see what happens with that for you. So please keep me posted in the comment section down below how everything this month is panning out for you. What are your experiences? And I hope that you are journaling a little bit around the dates that we talk about in here so that you yourself can see the patterns of what's showing up. You know, I know for me that because my second house is ruled by Libra, whenever there's activity in Libra, I really have to pay attention to my value, my finances, my all of these kinds of things because that's the way it works in my chart. So I hope you're keeping a journal, keeping up with what's going on so we can see and find your patterns and make these readings very effective for you. Of course, if you need a reading, come and see me. All right. All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, know that I love you so much and let's enjoy fall. Okay. Happy birthday, Scorp. Bye.